What's going on YouTube? It's Mike here today guys. I'm going to be doing my top uh, 10 features hidden in iOS 6. So guys, yes, that is right. I am doing, I am back with my uh, top hidden features in iOS. Now this is the iOS 6 version. If you don't remember last year um, in November of 2011, um, I did a iOS 5 hidden features and it's currently my most popular viewed video on my YouTube channel. So I figured uh, why not come back with an iOS 6 hidden features video because um, it will get, of course, very popular, and you guys seem to love the video. Um, so I figured I'd make another one, but this time for iOS 6. So today in this video, I'm going to be going over my top 10 features that are hidden in iOS 6, or at least that I think are very hidden. And uh, who knows, maybe you'll learn a thing or two about uh, the new operating system on your iPhone, your iPod Touch, or your iPad. Let's get into this video. So the first feature that I want to bring up is going to be panorama mode, and most people already know that this feature exists, but they have no clue how to activate it. Um, so if you don't know what panorama mode is, it's pretty much just in the camera, and uh, while you're taking a picture, you can actually go ahead and um, open up uh, a little option that will let you take a full panorama shot um, of a room, a display, you know, whatever. Um, so people really want this feature, they've seen it in the commercial, and they're like, um, how the heck do I get this feature? And I get questions all the time, whether it be in school, in person, on YouTube asking, Mike, how the heck do I activate this? So it's very simple, all you need to do is open your camera, and just hit options and then um, you'll see that you see grid HDR and panorama panorama is the one go ahead and choose it and then you'll be able to go from there I'll just show you a sample I'll go right here and then you know I just move around and take the whole panorama shot I'll just do this for example okay so there we go kinda of took it you can't really tell um, but it did get a very small panorama shot of me, um, as you can see there. And um, that's pretty much it. Like I said, people have trouble actually finding it. So if you have an iPhone 4S um, or an iPhone 5, I'm demonstrating on my iPhone 5 here. Um, I'm not sure if it works with the iPod Touch 4G. Pretty sure it doesn't. Um, this is also on the iPod Touch 5G, and I'm not 100% sure about it being on the new iPad. But I do know that it is on the iPhone 4S um, and the iPhone 5. On the iPhone 4S, of course if you've updated to iOS 6 along with the iPod Touch 5G. Okay, the next feature is the new kind of um, share tab with photos. Now, um, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, um, but there is kind of a different share tab now when you go to like photos or uh, saving or whatever. So um, we'll just show a sample here with photos. I'll go ahead and go in and actually select one. So here I have my brand new icon pulled up for YouTube. Um, and if I hit the share button, you see we get this whole um, kind of array of buttons in terms of what you could kind of do with this picture. Now, as you remember, Apple just kind of had this laid out where it would just be a bunch of buttons like this cancel one here. Um, but now they actually took the full icons, put them in depth, and made it kind of like a um, iOS home screen. And they kind of just laid out the icons. So here we have mail, message, Twitter, Facebook, assigned to contact, print, copy or use his wallpaper and that means that pretty much I could do all that stuff with this photo so I could email it send it in a text message put it on Twitter put it on Facebook because um, you know there is Facebook integration um, assign it to a contact print it copy it or use as wallpaper so I could pretty much do anything with that um, and I'm not sure if there's more options added but it is in this little drop or drop up menu now um, that you can actually load up and see all these icons and most people don't really notice this until they start uh, sharing their photos or files and people are like oh wow I didn't know you could do that and it's like all these really cool icons and I think it just makes it a lot easier because um, it's a better look at what you'd want to be doing with uh, your file or photo people are often complaining about how YouTube is gone and they can't upload their videos anymore well I'm here to tell you today that you still have that option now this doesn't involve um, the free YouTube app that Google actually has um, on the App Store you can still do it simply from the photos app so here we'll just look through a video obviously I don't have a ton on my phone, maybe somewhere in my library. All right, so let's say I want to take this video um, and I want to upload it to YouTube. Typically, you'd hit this button, and as you can see, the YouTube button is still there. So I could go ahead and hit it, and I won't sign in just for example here, um, but I still do have the full um, YouTube entering thing if you just see for that quick split second there. Um, if I just hit this, you'll see that the YouTube upload thing does appear. And if you sign in, I'm just not going to for this example. I could still fill in all my credentials and title and description and stuff and upload it directly to YouTube. Now, I don't know how long YouTube is going to be letting this feature slide by or actually um, Apple itself. Because, um, you know, YouTube app is no longer on iOS 6 and it won't be for any newer versions, I'm pretty sure. 
Uh, actually, I'm very sure, because you know that Apple and Google's contract has ended after these many years. They've also gotten rid of the maps, which people are mad over as well. Um, but you could still upload videos great uh, directly to YouTube, which I think is fantastic. I would hate if that feature's gone. And just to prove it, of course, it's on the iPhone 5, um, which the iPhone 5 never even got the YouTube app um, integrated into the iOS to begin with. Next, I want to talk about Facebook integration. Now, I know that this isn't really like a kind of hidden feature, but some people actually don't even know that they have this feature on their phone. And I'm always getting comments like, how do I post on Facebook since I could do it with iOS 6 now? Well, it's very simple. All you need to do is go into Settings, and then you'll see where Twitter is. You'll also have a Facebook option. And from there, you can actually log in. I just haven't done it yet. Um, to your Facebook account, and that's how, like, when you're looking at a photo or something, um, you could share it directly to Facebook. This isn't a very good example, but I'll go to m one of my last photos here, so I could take this, for example, and I could share it to Facebook on my account, and I don't even have to open the Facebook app on my phone. Um, I don't know if you could have several profiles on it. I'm not 100% sure on that, uh, kind of like an iPad, um, but you could share it right to there. So for the next thing I want to talk about is going to be the tap to tweet and tap to post Facebook option, and that, of course, um, is so you could actually tap the tweet and tap the post. Um, so now you do have it Twitter integrated and Facebook integrated, so you could share both ways. I'll just hit tap to tweet here. You see I get right to it, so I just say hello, for example, and then I'll just send it, and then it tweets out, and then it's done. So now that's posted on my Twitter, um, and then it's as simple as that, and then, uh, like I said, you could do the same exact thing with Facebook. I could send a post and then hit send, and it works just like that. Up next, we'll be moving to number six. Now, this really isn't a hidden feature here. I have my iPad, too. Um, and that is Clock is now available on the iPad. Now, if you've updated to iOS 6, um, you've probably already noticed this, but most people haven't even opened the app yet. And um, to be honest with you, I didn't even recognize that it was my home screen um, when I actually updated my iPad 2 here to iOS 6. Um, but I do want to show off the Clock app to you because it is a little different um, from what you get on the iPhone version. So here we're just having a look at the world clock. Um, then, you know, we have our alarm, which is a little bit different, so I'll just set an alarm here as an example. We'll just hit it for this time. Um, so at 7.08, an alarm will go off. Obviously, there's no point since it's 7.08 right now. And then we'll go here to stopwatch, so I could just hit start, and then stop, start, stop, and, you know, and so on like that. And then I could just hit um, lap number, and then I could just track everything. And then, of course, you know, we have timer, so I could set this to, let's just say, three hours, so I hit start, and then it'll time it, and then pause, which is really cool, you could do pause and resume, I wish you could do that on the iPhone, um, stuff like that, and then you could just hit done, and it'll track everything, and of course you could change um, the ringtone as well, you have all those options here just like you would get on the iPhone, so that is the clock app um, in iOS 6 on the iPad, I just figured I'd show you guys since uh, we haven't had it before. The next feature I want to talk about is in maps, and this is 3D map viewing. Now, don't get me wrong here. Um, I know people have been going crazy about this and having problems um, with maps in iOS 6. Apple has been hard at work to try and fix it. Please, guys, just kind of, like, calm down with that, because, I mean, people are going nuts over this. Um, but anyways, I do want to show you the 3D kind of viewing um, in iOS 6 on maps. As you know, Apple's recreated the map. Um, from the ground up by themselves, so it's really cool, but here we're just looking at the Statue of Liberty in New York City, and I could kind of turn this on a special angle, and then check this out, this is really cool, so I want to kind of angle it right, I can't really do it right now, but um, what you do is you kind of move it like, there you go, um, and you can see, as you can see here, I have a very nice 3D view of the Statue of Liberty, even with the torch in the sky, um, and the trees as well, as you can see, it's kind of popping out, it is very nice looking, I'm pretty sure you did get this in the regular Google Maps. Um, as you can see, it's very detailed. It kind of pops out of the ground, everything. I know it's not that easy to see on video, guys. Um, so it does look really nice, very detailed. And, you know, I could get in pretty much on any position and turn myself around as if I were there, um, sort of in a uh, helicopter, I guess you could see. I guess you could say. So I could just turn it from the back and stuff. Um, so it's really cool. Okay, guys, the next hidden feature in iOS 6 is launching applications through Siri. Now, this is going to work on the iPhone 4S, um, the iPad 3, the iPhone 5, and the iPod Touch 5G, pretty much any device that has Siri and is running iOS 6. Let me go ahead and demonstrate. Launch Mail. And it kind of works just like that. As you can see, it just opened the Mail app right there on the spot for me. I'll do it again. Open clock. 
And there you go. Super fast. It does it regularly. You need a jailbreak tweak to do something like this. And I have used it before. And to be honest with you, this is super fast. Siri doesn't have to even say anything. And um, it automatically loads up. And this doesn't even have to be for Apple apps. It could be any app you have on the home screen. Don't know if it works with Safari book uh, bookmarks. But um, it works with any app on the home screen. If you've downloaded it. If you, um, yeah, you know, it's on the iPhone. I think it might even work, uh, you know, eventually if we get a jailbreak for the iPhone 5. Um, if you have, like, jailbreak apps or tweaks, you know, that are applications uh, directly on the home screen. So it's pretty cool. So for the ninth uh, kind of hidden feature is going to be Do Not Disturb. Now, back in um, the iOS 6 Top 10 Features video that I did back in June, um, I did show this off. But again, this is a feature that people are not eyeing enough um, to actually recognize what it does. So here I'll actually hit On for Do Not Disturb. And let me just see if it's going to kick in or not. Uh, so I'll actually hit On. And then uh, here I can go to notifications, and we could work with Do Not Disturb. And um, if you look on my clock on my phone, right by 7.14 p.m., there's a little moon, a crescent next to it. Um, and that means Do Not Disturb is on. So if I turn on, like, scheduled for an example, what I'll explain is when Do Not Disturb is enabled, calls and alerts that arrive while locked will be silenced, and a moon icon will appear in the status bar. That's what it says right up here. So if you get a call or a message, you're not even going to get a vibration to your phone. It's just going to appear in your notification center um, or, you know, in the app itself, but you are not going to get any alerts at all. So if you're sleeping and you have your phone on vibrate, let's say someone messages you at 3 a.m. in the morning, well, if you have it scheduled, then that means that that text message isn't going to appear on your screen. You're not going to get a vibration, and you're not going to get a notification no matter what. So it's actually pretty useful, especially if you don't want to be disturbed. You need a good night's sleep. In a meeting, you never know. And Do Not Disturb can be turned on right from the settings. All you have to do is go to settings and then just look for the Do Not Disturb uh, on and off toggle. And it's pretty easy from there. And then number 10, my last hidden feature, is going to be the Privacy tab in Settings. And I'm going to go ahead and show that off. That is brand new. And here you have all the options of all your apps, or most of the you know main apps you need privacy for anyways, um, to just kind of hide everything. So for example, if I go to Calendars or Contacts, um, I can kind of block these apps to use my contacts. So let's say I don't want Farmville using my contacts, like my contact information. I could just go ahead and hit off, and Farmville will never look at my contacts. Pretty good for security. Um, if we go to reminders, this isn't really affecting anything. Apps, you know, it only kicks in really if apps have to do anything with it. So stuff like iMovie, Instagram, Facebook, Chrome, My Folder, TweetBot, or PayPal. If any of that stuff is kind of interfering with my photo library, I have the option to turn it off. And then when I go and access that app, it'll say like, um, you know, uh, PayPal or Twitter or Facebook wants to access photos, and then I could either grant or deny access there. So you get that toggle back um, when you first open the app, and you could kind of control all of that. Um, right here from this privacy tab without having to restore your device or whatever. So that's just a simple example. Um, so if I just turned all of these off, it would ask me in every app um, from the beginning again, you know, do I want to share stuff? And this is the same thing here, Twitter, Facebook, Bluetooth sharing, pretty much everything. You could just kind of change up um, whether you want apps to do it or not, or you could just start fresh. Um, you know what I mean. Just, you know, start over so uh, things aren't being accessed anymore. Maybe, you know, if you just want it private and you don't want anything shown, uh, maybe you have a fear that uh, the developers are looking, um, you know, you could kind of stop it from there. All right, guys, that is it for my iOS 6 top 10 hidden features video. If you think I should have included a different feature or a better feature or kind of explain one better, please leave some comments below on your thoughts. And, of course, if you like this video, uh, please leave a comment below telling me thank you because um, I know that this series was a favorite last year. That's why I figured um, I'd be repeating it. Of course, like I said, if you like this video, please uh, give a thumbs up and, of course, click the subscribe button up top. I will see you guys in the next video and uh, for an iOS 7 hidden features. I'm just kidding, guys. All right, see you in the next video. Peace.